I've always wanted to know how to use one of these old film cameras, but all of the technical parts of it made me like a little bit intimidated. But last year, Lou bought one of these and taught himself how to use it. And so we decided that the best first story to share with you guys would be teaching me how to use this camera and therefore getting to share it all with you. So first one is going to be how to shoot film. So I have slowly been teaching myself how to use this camera for the last year. I bought it around the corner from us at a um, old camera store. I think it was like 100 euros. If you don't have a film camera, before you buy one, I would suggest asking your parents or your relatives if any of them own old cameras because probably one of them does and they probably would really like to give it to you. So do that first and if no one has one, then definitely go out and buy one. There's really good ones that are only 20 to 50 dollars and then you can also get one that's like a hundred or you could spend like a thousand dollars and get a ridiculous one. This one was a hundred and it's really awesome. So once you have a camera, the next step is learning how to load the film. Loading film into my 35mm film camera is one of my favorite parts of the process because you get to make two decisions. First, you pick a film stock, which is kind of like the different filter options people use today on digital photos. There's all sorts of different color options, and there's even black and white film, like these rolls my cousin Tim gave me. Once you've chosen a film stock, you have to pick an ISO, which is where things start to get a little technical. ISO is a measure of how sensitive the film is to light. A low ISO, like 100, requires more light to produce the same exposure level as a high ISO film, like 800 for example. We're shooting with an ISO 200 film for this roll, which is considered a slow film, but is great for daylight and it means you get less noise than a high ISO or fast film. Noise is the grain you usually see in night photographs with cheap digital cameras. So, to load the film into the camera, you lift the knob on the left and insert the roll. Some cameras may be a little different than ours, but it's usually a similar process. Next, you pull the film across the back of the camera and insert it into the small sliver in the wheel on the right. Make sure the grips go through the holes in the film. To double check that it's winding through properly, I like to shoot two photographs and watch it wind through the camera so I know it's working before I close the back. Once you've loaded your film, the next step is to let the camera know what ISO you chose by using a meter located on the left side of our camera. You dial the ISO in and you're all set to go. Hey, look back here. Oh man, I forgot to wind it. <laughs> oh, I hate like that. <laughs> oh, I got a smile. Oh, Even better. Good. <laughs> wind it. So you always wind after. I always do. <laughs> Yay! I got a yogi baby picture. Oh, that was cool. This is so fun! Before we continue with the fun, we should probably review some of the technical decisions Dana made during that shoot. She shot this roll using aperture priority mode on the camera, which means that the camera uses its internal light meter to select a shutter speed, and all she has to do is choose an aperture. It's a great mode for learning, and for taking portraits where you need to be a little faster. To shoot film, all you need to do is understand the relationship between aperture and shutter speed. 
Shutter speed is simply the speed of the camera's shutter. It's just a measure of how slow or fast the camera takes a photo. The fastest shot our camera can shoot is 1 1,000th of a second, and the slowest shot is 30 seconds. A fast shot gives you less light, but it's easier to shoot handheld without getting blurry images. A long shot gives you more light, but objects that are moving may appear blurry, and you will need a tripod. Aperture can confuse a lot of people at first, but once you get it, you'll find it pretty simple. Aperture refers to the opening of a lens's diaphragm through which light passes, this thing here that you can open or close. It's measured in f-stops, and on our camera we have a range from 1.4 to 16. A low f-stop, like 1.4, lets more light through the lens, so it's a larger aperture, while a high f-stop, like 16, is considered a smaller aperture because less light gets through the lens. The lingo is confusing at first, but basically, if you need more light, choose a low f-stop, and if you want less light, choose a high f-stop. Changing the f-stops affects how much light goes through the lens, but most importantly, it also affects the depth of field of the image. If you want a wide depth of field so that a lot of the image is in focus, you'll need a high f-stop. If you want that shallow depth of field look that people seem to love, choose a low f-stop, like 2.8. To really learn these concepts, rewatch this section a couple of times and then head out to start experimenting. It's really not as hard as it seems. Nice. So this is at 180. Mm -hmm. So 180, I'm gonna go to four. That's a great idea. So that means more of our face will be in focus. Yeah, except all of her face is in focus. Oh. The leaf in my way. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now she's in focus. Now can I take it? Mm-hmm. Ah, this is so I fun. I love the sound. Right? Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture of you guys. Oh, okay. Are you teaching Louisa? <laughs> that's really cute. So okay. now we're recording. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now 180 is okay? Yeah. <laughs> that was precious. <laughs> okay, Lou, I'm ready when you're ready. I'm ready when you're ready. Okay. I'm in focus. Wow, this is in focus. <laughs> now you have to say some sort of joke. Oh. Wait, like, are you filming? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I can take a photo. <laughs> Wait, now it says 180. Not 200. It's fine. It's just oh, wait, the cloud. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I forgot to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, her eyes were fully closed when he took that. <laughs> no, she's laughing. Every photo would be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna edit, edit, edit. Oh, that was a laugh. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> I'm a photographer, I made it. <laughs> it's a wrap. Once you finish shooting the roll, you can remove it by clicking the button on the bottom of the camera to release the film, and then using the winding mechanism on the top left of the camera to pull the film back into the cartridge. Wind it back by turning clockwise for a minute or so until you stop feeling resistance and hear a clicking sound. Now you get to remove the film 
and deliver it to your local camera shop for development. Hello. Hello. Okay. Mm-hmm. Das dauert dann circa eine Woche. Okay. Super, danke schön. Schönen Schön Wochenende. Tschüss. It should take about a week, but I find that's actually one of the most beautiful parts of shooting film. Because you have to wait. And that wait turns into nervous anticipation and excitement, which is what shooting film is all about. Hello. So we came to this park. To yeah, to open them. I want to see them. Don't you? Oh my god. I hope they work. Oh. Oh my god. Alex is going to kill me. These are awesome. Why is Alex going to kill you? Because I, I caught her like mid, mid movement. I think they're beautiful. Oh. Look at that one. Oh my god, these like look so cool. Baby Louie. So Jess is gonna die. Wow. Oh my god, the next one's so cute. Show me, show me. Wow, that's so good. Right? Look at this one. Do you see these, Lou? Are you freaking out? I've become a photographer. Yeah? I think so, I don't know. Oh my god! Monzi, what a babe. Look. Like that? Yeah. Less light, turn it more for you. Yeah. Wow. Oh! Lulu. Monty's eyes are closed, so well done. Oh, Larissa. Look at that. That's awesome. This is like a portrait. Look at that. Ah, it's like a model shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Lou. Oh, I'm gonna frame that. What? I said I'm gonna frame that. Oh. It's crazy with that like aperture, you can't get everything in focus, so like your nose is out of focus, but your eyes are in focus. In our neighborhood. Whoa, look how red the cherries look. That's weird. Oh, I got your eyes closed on that one. These flowers turned out. <gasps> Oh my God, you're the most handsome man in the whole wide world. This one's even better. Blue. My God, this is the most handsome picture of you I've ever seen. I think I look kind of tired. No, you don't, you look beautiful. This is like the best roll of film ever. It's weird they like didn't develop this first one, which is like actually kind of cool. Well, that was awesome. <laughs>